Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be updating you guys on the tropics where we still have Fred and Grace, but we also have a new tropical invest to discuss as well. That brings us to a total of three potential and ongoing tropical cyclones. <laughs> Anyway, before I get into things, be sure to smash the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know which one do you think will go down as the more impactful storm, Grace or Fred, at the end of the day? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this one, and look, we're taking a look here at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, uh, Fred is currently listed as a post-tropical cyclone, actually remnants to be more exact. Uh, we also have Tropical Storm Grace, which is currently heading towards Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Unfortunately, Haiti, we don't really know what the impacts are going to be uh, due to the major, major earthquake that happened just yesterday. Uh, obviously, bringing a tropical cyclone into the mix is not good news whatsoever, so we're going to be really closely watching that situation, but... Regardless, I don't think it's going to bring good things, obviously. So it's very, very unfortunate. And hopefully this one just passes over with minimal amounts of impacts there to Haiti. Uh, just because of the devastating earthquake they had yesterday. Obviously a very unfortunate situation down there. Now, we do have that next tropical disturbance there. Our Invest 96L there in that yellow region heading towards Bermuda. We're going to talk about that one at the very end of the video. There's not a lot to say yet, but we're going to be watching that one as well throughout the video. Now for Fred, here is the low pressure location. And as you can see, now Fred has basically moved off of Cuba and now is kind of in between uh, there in the Yucatan Peninsula and Florida there, uh, which is a kind of decent area for a tropical system to be for development. This one is expected to go further west and it's already further south than anticipated. Uh, but further south and further west than originally anticipated. And also there's been a southwest trend on Grace as well. So it seems like this has been the trend with the models. Uh, they come out with a little bit of a north, uh, I would say a northeast bias, and then they kind of move further and further uh, to the southwest as more runs come out. This is something we see with snowstorms as well, these kind of biases and trends with the models. And once you kind of gather an awareness of what they've been doing, it's easier to forecast future storms because we'll know, okay, well, they're showing it kind of up here, but it could be further southwest than that, or pretty much will probably be further southwest than what this is showing. It's going to make it easier for us tracking storms in the future, and we will definitely take mental note of that, obviously. Here's the satellite imagery of this one uh, way earlier this morning at about 2 a.m. Not looking too good, but as we move this towards about the time of making this video, you can see this storm is really picking up intensity now that it is clear of Cuba and clear of Florida. I'm kind of worried about this one because this is an area, obviously, in the Gulf where storms rapidly intensify often and with the warmer than normal waters. This one should have an easy time developing into a moderate tropical storm at least. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center for this one, even some spaghetti model guidance, and then we're going to be taking a look at the impacts, total rain, storm surge, arrival time of winds, and probability of tropical storm force winds, and then we're going to move on to Grace, and then finally the, in, the new invest there in the middle of the Atlantic as well. So all of those things are coming up in just a moment. So here is that cone forecast here for the remnants of Fred. As you can see, it is expected to be a tropical storm pretty much today. But I said that yesterday too and the day before. So it's been expected to become a tropical storm. It just has not really done that. Although with the recent satellite imagery update, like I just showed you guys with the direction it's heading, I think for real now, we can expect this one to begin uh, re-intensifying and regathering itself. Uh, from this point looking forward, we have a couple of days over the Gulf waters until it hits either the panhandle of Florida, uh, Alabama, or Mississippi, but I doubt Mississippi. That would be pretty far west, but again, it has been trending west. Uh, so this one has some time to develop, and I would not be surprised to see it uh, become a decent tropical storm, to say the least. Now, here's some spaghetti model guidance, though, and as you can see, these models keep it a little bit more spread out and a little further west than even what the National Hurricane Center is showing. We see some of those even impacting Louisiana directly, Mississippi directly, but a majority there, or the mean average, I would say, is right in between Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. Um, and we have a couple showing it pretty far east on the Florida Panhandle, but the, the overall mean average, like I said, is right there on the western edge of that Florida Panhandle. Now, as this one heads up into the United States, you can see it heads straight up 
through into the Ohio Valley of the Northeast and then offshore into Canada, kind of Atlantic Canada area uh, as a strong low pressure center. So this one is going to bring pretty much some significant impacts through a, a lot of the eastern, interior eastern United States, I would say. Here's the total rainfall expected. And if you're in the lighter greens, you're at an inch to two inches of rainfall. Darker greens, we're taking a look at two to four inches of rainfall. Yellows, which is four to six inches of rainfall. So we see a lot of that for the Florida Panhandle and also for Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, there in the mountainous regions. Beautiful area, by the way. And then the oranges is where we're taking a look at about six to 10 inches of rainfall. We see some of that there for the mountains of North Carolina, but also down there for the Florida Panhandle as well. Uh, which is obviously a significant amount of rainfall. Six to ten inches of rain is enough to bring flooding, obviously, especially for certain regions. So we're going to be watching that situation. Here's the expected storm surge, and it's basically one to three feet here across all of these red areas. So that's all you need to know basically at this point, but that could get upgraded at any point. Here's the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds uh, on screen. So you can take a look at those black lines showing you the time frame. So find your area and take a look, but I'm mostly worried about the probability here because if you're anywhere in the greens, you have a 5 to 30% chance of tropical storm force winds, and then if you're anywhere in the oranges or yellows, you have a 30 to 70% chance of those tropical storm force winds, and that is around for Alabama and the Florida Panhandle there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and focus on Grace. What are the updates with Grace? Where is she going to head? And is she going to be an intense tropical cyclone? Or what's going to happen with that one? And then we're going to take a look at the new invest in just a moment as well. Now here is the low pressure location here for Tropical Storm Grace. And as you can see, this one is expected to be pretty much heading towards Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic because of her current location. Now pretty much... Uh, near Puerto Rico, but still kind of south, but it is going to head in a northwesterly direction, uh, scraping by Puerto Rico, but likely impacting Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Cuba directly, just as Fred did as well. Here's the satellite imagery, and as you can see, it's a pretty organized storm. It does look like it is still intensifying based on this, uh, but as this one draws closer to Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, where there is some very tall clouds over there, but also some very tall mountains on those islands, uh, this one can be expected to weaken quite a bit during those land impacts. Now, the only thing that is good news for Haiti here is I think with the direct impact to Dominican Republic, uh, that might mean that the storm is a little weaker by time it is impacting Haiti. Although that does not mean that there won't be major impacts, uh, especially considering the current condition of the country of Haiti, obviously. So that is a very, very big factor in this storm. Probably the biggest factor that is going to go down with Grace uh, is just what the impacts look like for Haiti, obviously. So we can only hope, uh, and I'm sure people in Puerto Rico and people in Dominican Republic literally agree with this because it just, for the greater good of humanity, obviously, uh, we can only hope that um, Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic take the brunt of this one uh, on Haiti's behalf, obviously, with the current condition of the country, like I said. Hopefully those impacts with Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, those mountains there just eat up this storm and we get minimal amounts of rainfall uh, and storminess there for Haiti. That, I think that's what everybody's hoping at this point. So we will be watching. You guys have a tropical storm watch as of right now in Haiti. I do expect that to be a warning uh, pretty soon. Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico have a warning at this point, uh, but they are expected to get more uh, direct impact from a stronger tropical storm than Haiti will probably at this point. Now you can see after that point it is expected to go over Cuba and then eventually into the Gulf which is pretty much why uh, we expect some more intensification at that point and as you can see uh, from 2 a.m. on Thursday it's pretty much where Fred is right now but then by 2 a.m. on Friday it'll be over the middle of the Gulf there and it'll be nearing uh, one of the Gulf states obviously afterwards but it could have another day or two over the Gulf which would mean more chance for intensification. All right, now here's the spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see from the GEFS model, it has some intense outputs here with those oranges and blues, but really it's all over the place with location. Here's our European ensemble model, and it's a little less intense, but still all over the place. And it's not much better with the individual models, still all over the place. So really what happens with this storm is a huge question mark. Here's the intensity uh, guidance here for Grace. And as you can see, they keep it pretty weak over the next 96 over the next 120 hours, almost only one takes it towards a hurricane. Uh, but afterwards, we do see a lot of those trending up. And that's because they are probably over the Gulf by that point, And that's when pretty much they could freely develop. Here's the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook here for 
Uh, that new Tropical Invest, you can see we have a 30% chance of development at this point. And then the Spaghetti Model Guidance has this one all over the place, but it's expected to do a little bit of a loop-de-loop. -loop. But I never trust these loops because sometimes it just doesn't really happen that way. Uh, but we can only hope it does. The Intensity Model Guidance shows that this one likely will end up becoming a tropical storm, which is interesting though. So we will be watching all three of these systems over the coming days. For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. Obviously with this new invest, my confidence is even a little bit more lower just because we have another uh, storm going on on the table, a brand new one. But I feel the most confident in Fred. Uh, Grace is the middle one. And this new one obviously is kind of more of a question mark. For today's comment of the day, I'm not going to read all of this, but Tom left a really good comment. I asked you guys, uh, what do you think will happen with Tropical Storm Grace? And I agree with all of the points here. So feel free to pause this video and read it. It was a very intelligent comment. I appreciate the comment there uh, by Tom, so good one there. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dobin Nagel, Lerla Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Quidalessa, Cat Bite, Charles Tennant, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Balin, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be part of that exciting patron end screen today, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. But also to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.